latest on the growing scandal in Rio. Those two American swimmers landing in the U.S. going through customs just moments ago. One swimmer, though, still in Brazil, Jimmy Fegan, meeting with police overnight, negotiating a deal after new surveillance footage from that gas station incident surfaces. ABC's Matt Gutman is on the scene there for us in Rio, has the very latest. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Robin. What happened at this gas station has become an international incident. Now, those two U.S. swimmers are back in the U.S. And Jimmy Fegan, the man you mentioned, who's the only swimmer still here, he agreed to pay $11,000 to a charity to get his passport back. But despite all of that, Brazil still leaving the door open to charging all four of them. ABC News was on that plane with them overnight, talking to Olympic swimmers Gunnar Benson, Jack Conger, the two men seen in this exclusive video traveling without an entourage, keeping to themselves after their night of partying Sunday with teammates Ryan Lochte and James Fegan turned into an international incident. We have just landed here at the Miami airport on the flight from Rio to Miami. Gunnar and Jack are still in the back of the plane here. Uh, and I spoke to Gunnar in the middle of the flight, and he said that they are really looking forward to being back here in the United States. The last of the four swimmers stuck here in Rio, Fegan spending hours overnight at a police station. His attorney saying he'd have to pay about $11,000 to a charity to get his passport back. This as new videos are coloring in some details of what happened that night. Lockett said robbers had held him and his teammates up at gunpoint. But Brazilian police saying the men weren't victims, they were vandals destroying this gas station bathroom. After leaving Club France at 5.47 a.m., cameras capture the group walking around that gas station around 6 a.m. Watch as one pulls a sign off the wall. Lochte, seen here, stumbles out of the bathroom. Police say the swimmers kicked down the door, then vandalized the bathroom inside. Then those four swimmers continued down here back towards their taxi. And at this point, they allegedly ripped a poster off the wall before being confronted by those security guards. After the men get into their taxi, one of the men police say was a security guard confronts them. They get out of the car. The tape then cuts out for a three minute chunk. You next see the four swimmers sitting on a curb with their hands up. Lochte here in the middle, standing to get something out of his pocket. Police say a security officer detained them at gunpoint until they paid about $50 for damages. But sources who spoke to all four swimmers overnight tell ABC News they were actually forced to hand over $400. And overnight, Lochte's attorney telling ABC News no matter what happened at the gas station, the swimmers were robbed. Police questioned the story from the start, especially after seeing this video. The men returning to the Olympic Village from the gas station with watches, wallets, and phones. Overnight, the U.S. Olympic Committee calling the athletes' behavior unacceptable, saying, we apologize to our hosts in Rio and the people of Brazil. Robin, I want you to take a look at that surveillance camera up there. It captured those four swimmers sitting right down there, a man standing over them with the gun. Now, what's amazing here is that both sides, the lawyers for the swimmers and the police say the video proves their point. So the big question is, were these four swimmers being extorted for $400 or were they simply being asked to pay for the damage that they allegedly caused? Trying Robin. to get to the bottom of that, Matt. Thank you. We're going to bring in ABC News chief legal analyst Dan Abrams. You've seen the headlines here. Liar, liar, speedo on fire, real police call Lochte liar, not victim. Well, look, there's no question in my mind that he lied, right? When he initially said publicly, we were pulled over in this taxi and then a gun put to my head by these people pretending that they were police officers, that's not what happened, right? Furthermore, we didn't know about this vandalism and this incident at the gas station. With all that said, he also may have been robbed, meaning he may have been wrong to do what he did at the gas station. He may have been wrong to publicly embellish the story. And it also may be robbery to say to someone with a gun, yeah, you may want to pay us 50 bucks. We're going to take 400. So what happens now? Well, look, for Ryan Lochte, nothing. Uh, meaning he's now here in the United States. He's not going to get extradited as a result of this. Fegan is the one who really needs to be concerned because he's there. Um, he's the one trying to negotiate a deal right now because if he were to get indicted for either filing a false police claim or for vandalism, et cetera, it's the last thing he'd want, right? I mean, talking of, regardless of what the sentence would be, up to six months potentially for filing a false police claim, um, additional for vandalism, 
as a practical matter, what the Brazilians want is their reputation back. Sure they do. You know, it's not, it's not they, they don't need vegan behind bars. They want to be able to say to the world, we did what we promised. We kept Rio safe. And, and if they can be able to say that in good faith, I think that this will all be worked out in some way or another. And the American authorities, you know, weighing in and saying this is unacceptable and I think that's, behavior. I think that's very helpful, actually, in resolving this. Because, again, it says to the Brazilian authorities, we get it. We yeah. get it. This isn't what it initially seemed to the world. Yeah, and there was a firestorm on social media. I had to tell you this. They're referring to them as kids. They're not kids. These are grown men. Ryan Lochte's 32 years old. Yeah. So the yeah. saga continues. Yeah.